Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. On today's show, we have another guest. Because having guests is easy for me. It's more fun. We're talking with Ben Fadden over here, who unfortunately, if you're watching YouTube, doesn't have a picture, but it's all good. He writes for Gas. I'm going to be talking about Padres and all that good stuff heading into this new year. You know what it is, guys. Lockdown Padres. Here we go. You are Locked On Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Lockdown Padres Podcast, which is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Wednesday, December 29th. As always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly, I promise you certainly, not always the most, Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with some of my baseball-related work on places like Baseball FYI, Fires on Base, Off Bench Baseball, or Just Baseball, to which I am a staff writer for. You can follow me on Twitter at Javipeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or Padres Twitter account, which is really good. Lots of good memes on there, at L-O underscore Padres, or Locked on Padres on YouTube. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Padres your hashtag first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And today I am being joined by a very special guest because here's why he's a special guest. Because I, I say that a lot. I say that I only allow the most illustrious guests on this podcast. That's one of my rules. But in this case, it is the first ever guest who reached out to me first, which is rare. I have never met anyone who wanted to be on this podcast outright. That is Ben Fadden, a writer for Gaslamp Ball and also the creator slash host of Talking Friars who reached to me out on Twitter. Uh, I basically just met him last week. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, ben, how you doing, man? Doing good. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I just love talking Padres baseball. You know, we're in the middle of a lockout right now, so mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot to do, uh, but just love talking Padres with anyone and everyone. So let's do it. Awesome, man. Awesome. And um, just got to point out, everybody watching the YouTube, Ben's camera tragically seems to be having some some malfunction. And I can relate. I can relate because my everything in my life uh, is a malfunction oftentimes. So to be honest with you, we should be grateful. It's just the cam camera. Uh, so everybody watch YouTube, that's why it currently doesn't show a picture of our fine fellow here. But I wanted to first start things off by talking about like how I came across your work and how you reached out to me. You mentioned how like I quoted your Eric Hosmer piece in one of my episodes, which is true, um, about the 10-5 rules and all that stuff. And, you know, to be quite honest with you, I hadn't realized until recently that gas lamp had picked things up and stuff because they were a little bit uh dry or dry is a little bit harsh of a word but they didn't have as much in 2020 so first of all just just talk about that how has it been working for them what kind of pieces are you working on right now and what's your general i guess view about the san diego padres team and what it's like covering them for the site given that you know they were the most exciting team in baseball they still kind of are on days when they're feeling like it but now they're just kind of we're in this weird we're in an impasse it's it's not as optimistic i think as it once was yeah, so in terms of just the site, um, I've been writing fan posts, you know, for since like last spring training. Uh, obviously, there's the shutdown and all that, uh, but been writing posts. Obviously, like you mentioned, the site, you know, is down just because of COVID. They cut a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. money wise, uh, but then they brought people back on. And so I'm kind of like the head of the site. Eric Steven kind of brought me on. He oversees the Dodgers site, but I'm kind of the head of Gaslamp Ball just because of just the way just the passion that i have the just the commitment that i have uh to the team my family's had season tickets since i was 13. uh just wow. been always always been around the team uh always follow them and then obviously having the talking fires podcast uh you can check that out uh youtube just look up talking fires at talking fires on instagram and twitter just doing that uh have podcasts every week have guests every week most mostly every week um gonna have an episode on thursday i believe uh but yeah i've had matt vaskersion on uh we have some pretty big plans for next spring training on guests uh that mm -hmm. i'm lining up uh so I'll, I'll, that's the most i'll say about that uh but matt vaskersion we've had jesse agler a couple times recently this off season uh stephen woods from ben and woods he was great talked for like an hour um a lot of great guests. Jared Carabas from Barstool at starting nine. 
So just a lot of great wow. guests. Uh, someone, Look at you, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, a, uh, WFAN host uh, when we previewed a Met series last year. So just getting a lot of uh, different perspectives. And again, just love talking baseball. Usually I have a co-host, Jacob Zimmerman, my cousin. So just love talking about uh, the Padres, talking about Major League Baseball in general. And so that's pretty much my background. And then just to kind of end that last question that you had on just the Padres as a whole, Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, obviously last year was disappointing, uh, to say the least, um, you know, Jace Tingler, you know, friends, my friends in high school, which I've graduated, you know, when that thing, you know, knew down, I wasn't a very happy person to be around because I didn't like the hire at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that I felt like a rookie manager, someone that knew when no one knew we had to, you know, look him up on Google to know who he was. That wasn't really where the Padres should have went, you know, at that time. Uh, they had mm-hmm. Andy Green as a guy to, you know, transition into a contending team. And then to bring in a rookie manager for a team that could contend and, you know, contend for a World Series, that just did, at least on paper, that just didn't seem like the right choice for me. And obviously I was proven right. Unfortunately, I was proved right uh, with the way that went down and the whole clubhouse Hosmer situation and just the, every, the way everything went down, obviously that – did not end up the way fans wanted, or maybe some fans kind of like me, after we saw that it wasn't going to work, we wanted it to fail like that so that, you know, we could get new uh, names in there. Obviously Bob Melvin, tremendous hire. I wanted Bochy obviously, but I thought that that was like a, a move that just wasn't going to happen. Wasn't really realistic because he was in retirement and obviously destined to go to Cooperstown. Uh, So Bob Melvin, I mean, that wasn't obviously a name that was on any of our radars. I was a big book Showalter guy, but Melvin certainly, I mean, you can't knock, I don't think you can knock the hire because Preller maybe went outside of his comfort zone a little bit. Obviously we know he's an outside the box thinker, but I think he went outside, Mm -hmm. literally outside the box, outside of his comfort zone because he wants his guy, right? Bob Melvin maybe isn't his guy, but he knew that they needed a veteran manager and who else? But to, you know, bring in someone who did a lot with a little in Oakland, you know, he, he went to 10 mm-hmm. playoff or I think, you know, he was a uh, manager there for 10 years. He went, I believe he had more postseason appearances in his A's than like the Padres have had in their entire franchise. <laughs> so just to give <laughs> you right. perspective, I mean, this guy can win with little and Peter Seidler supplying him with more than just little. If that makes sense, you know, Manny Tatis, the rotation, obviously, hopefully is going to be healthy this year. Big names there. Uh, bring in some guys in the bullpen. Would have liked to have Melanson back, but uh, unfortunately that didn't happen. He, he was with the money. Uh, but I think obviously, you know, the coaching staff I discussed on my late episode, it's, it's diverse. And I like that. There's some unique uh, perspectives. The first base coach, uh, you know, at Eastern Car- East Carolina, when it was at Vanderbilt, so he can maybe connect with the younger guys, guys coming up, you know, through spring training and all that. And then you have guys that obviously with Melvin as a former manager and now still obviously the manager, but you have Ryan Christensen and Matt Williams who were on his staff in Oakland. So they have that perspective or that, excuse me, that relationship that they built with Melvin. So there's not going to be any transition process where, Melvin comes in in a post game press conference and says, we're, we're still gelling. No, no, no. This they're, they've been gelling already. They already know how things are run, how spring training, which isn't going to get talked about, but that's big. How, you know, the role Christensen has, you know, during games as the bench coach in certain situations. So I think that the coaching staff's built well. And uh, I think that just the team right now, it's heading in the right direction. Well said, man. I mean, you just you just did the whole encyclopedia breakdown of the 2020 and everything, man. And I, I agree. I agree. I think that, um, especially with the Melvin thing, I think that that was a great hire. And I think you're right. He did a lot with a little. I guess some people say the negative is, oh, well, not enough playoff wins. And, oh, the some of the bullpen stuff and whatnot right now. But, hey, man, one thing you can say, and this is kind of funny to say about the Padres team, which historically is not like this, but a, a lot more resources probably that are going to be afforded to him because this is a team that actually has shown that's willing to make moves and and, and spend money and what have you on um, some free agent players, whether or not they'll do that for the rest of this offseason. 
season and the lockout and the remaining free agents remains to be seen. But in general, that's kind of cool. While Oakland was like, nah, man, uh, Trevor Story for half a season, nope, too much money for even if it's just for half a season. So it's right. definitely a different kind of uh, scenario. But Ben, before we continue on that point, I need to tell you something that has, you know, that you could have some people who critique um, Bob Melvin. You could find some naysayers. But you can't find naysayers for a very certain product. You know what that product is? Pro- probably not a clue. It's fine. You could just say no. It's uh, Built Bars, guys. Uh, the best protein bars in all the land. It's the new year, or at least it's about to be the new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. They're the protein bars that taste like candy bars and maybe even better than a candy bar. And I can, I can attest to that. They're delicious. And what I love about them the most is, aside from being healthy for you and whatnot, they have such a great variety of flavors, man. They've got everything. They've got chocolate, obviously. They've got this double chocolate. They've got apple almond crisp, which is my favorite personally, coconut brownie chunk. They've got a new eggnog flavor, a new gingerbread flavor, just in time for the holidays. And my mom's personal favorite, cherry bar sea. they got all sorts of flavors for you guys. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compared to that to the candy bar and uh. You're looking, you're looking pretty all right, guys. So here's an idea for the new year. Go to all of your secret treat stashes at home, in the pantry, wherever. Throw out all the sugary stuff and get yourself some Built Bars, guys. And now because you're listening to this podcast, I have a special offer for you. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Remember that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Once again, guys, thank you for making Lockdown Potters your hashtag first listen every bit. We are free and available on all platforms. Ben, Ben, my man, uh, you may not have had the answer for the best uh, protein bar that has no negatives in the world, but um, as we were just talking about with Melvin, do you think that, because you also alluded to the, the Bruce Bochy thing, and you alluded to AJ Pro as an outside thinker, which reminded me of that athletic piece you might be familiar with that dropped, uh, what was it, like two weeks before the season ended, which kind of really was a, a great summation of where the Padres are right now. And I actually thought the piece was very well done and I felt like it wasn't overly negative either. Uh, I thought it was quite interesting, but what do you think is just kind of, what do you think of the just simple, I know it's not the most creative thing in the world, but what are the biggest questions for the Padres? Do you think uh, not just for this, the rest of this off season, what they're going to do, but heading into this next season, do you think? Uh, well, the big, uh, I mean, starting with the off season, the, I mean, the big question is what the heck are they going to do with their offense? And, and more specifically, in the outfield, right? You got right field, mm-hmm. Will Myers. Yeah, they could trade him because he's easier to trade than Hosmer's contract with just one year mm-hmm. left. Grisham's obviously going to be in center. Abrams is a little bit away, obviously getting hurt, so that sent him back in the minors. Uh, I believe that he played in the Arizona Fall League, though, recently. But in terms of the outfield, I mean, left field, power outfield bat is obviously the priority. Tommy Pham coming back on a one year deal to be on the bench. Uh, that's probably you know, what they're going to end up doing after they get a power outfield bat. Uh, the big question is, though, if who are they going to get a Castellanos or are they going to get a Chris Bryant or are they going to have to settle for someone else? I was a big fan of Abisail Garcia on my podcast I and like on too. Gas Lamp and all that because it would have been, you know, a two- or three-year deal, and it would have been something that I think the Padres could have afforded. It would have been better, you know, contract-wise. Uh, than having to give Castellanos, you know, a hundred plus million dollars, which is what it feels like it's going to have to cost. And I wouldn't, you know, this is another topic, but I wouldn't be so, you know, interested in doing that. But the big question is, what are they going to do for that power outfield bat? Because they need it. Um, you know, just the off season need, obviously, like I just mentioned, that power outfield bat. In 2021, the Padres scored 729 runs. That was tied for 14th in the league. That needs to be better. The Dodgers, in comparison, scored 830 runs, and San Francisco scored 804 runs. And so between San Diego and San Francisco there, that's a 75-run gap. And so that's a lot of runs, you know, being left. And that and that number, that run total that the Padres had, 729 runs, was with Tatis hitting 42 home runs. He isn't going to do that every year. So adding, you know, a Castellanos or a Brian obviously would help uh, and getting, you know, more consistent production from that catcher position, whether that's Alfaro, you know, reverting back to 20, what, 2018, 2019 self when he hit like 20 home runs, 
first year in Miami, or that's Austin Nola somehow staying healthy, or that's Gabriel Sonner coming up and surprising someone if he's not attached to, you know, a Hosmer deal or something. So there's the, the power needs to come from somewhere, and it, there's just no question that it needs to improve. The big question is where is it going to come from? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And um, I also just forgot that I, I broke another rule of my podcast. This is not your fault. Uh, I personally do not say the name of our first baseman on the podcast. It's been a long running bit, but you are right that there is a question regarding him. I know there's been some talks of how do you trade him, but the problem is with the contract, that's just going to be very hard. And the Padres farm system isn't really kind of uh, what it used to be uh, in terms of just depth and whatnot. There's still some good players in there, but not with the depth and whatnot. You mentioned Campy's honor. He's exciting, hopefully. Uh, but you're right. They definitely need a power bat, um, in theory. Unless you want to be the one that believes that our first baseman will turn into what he looked like for 35 games in 2020, or if Will Myers will all of a sudden be what he was in 2020, or if Tommy Fan... If you, unless you really think that those guys are going to improve, the Padres probably need a, a, a top, you know, you know, slugging type of bat. And it's interesting because... That's one of the things that I think was so frustrating for a lot of Padres fans this past season was obviously just the offense being really mediocre, especially in the second half, but also that A.J. Prowler wasn't able to acquire that big, you know, home run crushing bat that they needed, despite the fact that they had been rumored for guys for years. I mean, for a long time, Joey Gallup, he ends up going to the, the um, what's it called? The Yankees. And then you right. have Anthony Rizzo go to the Yankees. You have all these guys. That, and then instead they acquire Adam Frazier, who I didn't hate the, the, the trade in a vacuum. Uh, I didn't hate it because I was like, all right, if you just want to get a, a, a guy who you think is going to be okay, he's going to get on base, that's fine. But that wasn't an area the Padres struggled in. Uh, the Padres, right. like you said, 14 yeah. runs for sure. But on base percentage, batting average, they weren't the worst. The problem is at the end of the year, 23rd in home runs, 21st in slugging percentage. That's not going to cut it. And it's weird considering that you have guys like Manny Machado, El Nino in the lineup, and you're like, wow, that shouldn't be the thing. Weren't you guys known as Slam Diego? Didn't you earn that moniker? That's exactly what happened. And now we're wondering, do we get a Castellanos? Do they get a Chris Bryant? I personally, I like Abby Gear For the record, by the way, everybody, Ben brought up Abby Silgar. See, he ended up signing with the Marlins four years, $53 million deal just to, to you know, um, what's it called? Get, get everybody caught up, I guess. Um, the other yeah, guys out there. Castellanos is probably yeah. going to have to get, you yeah. know, I mean, quadruple or, you know, double that amount, that total amount for maybe the same amount of years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I've been a proponent on this podcast to share just my take on it. Of I really wanted Marcana for like the longest time. One because I really enjoy his Instagram. Not gonna lie, it's just a foodie's paradise. But also because he's just been quietly like a top twenty-ish outfielder every now and then. And the Mets got him for two years, twenty-six. And I just thought that's really good signing for the Padres. I think he could play left field just fine. Um, and then the other guy that I think would be interesting is Michael Conforto. Uh, I know that. I've been comparing him to Marcus Simeon, and I don't mean that in terms of the skills. I don't mean that in terms of literally their overall value. But in the sense that Michael Conforto, because of his down year, it reminds me of Marcus Simeon having a down year in 2020, and you might be able to get him on a one-year prove-it deal. Uh, And I think that Conforto, there wasn't really anything that I saw in 2021 that suggested, yeah, this is just who he is. And even if that is who he was... It was a down season. It wasn't that bad compared to even a Tommy Pham. He was still probably better than Tommy Pham, and I think he could play left field too. A guy like Castellanos, unless you figure out the lineup and something else happens and you move the guy at first base to another team, I think that that, I mean, Nick Castellanos is probably one of the worst defenders in baseball, and I really wouldn't like that, even if you're assuming that we get the designated hitter. Uh, What do you think about that, really? Yeah, I I agree with what you're saying, that the overall, I guess, premise of the bringing in Conforto, but at the same time, you got to realize Conforto's agent is Scott Boris. And what does Scott Mm -hmm. Boris, what is his reputation? Getting the most that he can out of his, uh, you know, uh, you know, his uh, players. And obviously we have the flashback of how he did that and used probably the Red Sox. And even if the Red Sox maybe weren't committed or interested in Hosmer, they ended up actually, you know, pinning the Red Sox against the Padres, and the Padres, you know, felt desperate and ended up giving him way more than he probably, uh, you know, had earned up to that point. Uh, just knowing that what his age was going to be throughout the contract, uh, prime years were already out the window. And I'm not saying that Conforto's prime years are out the window. Uh, from what's the comments? Years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. 
but the comments that we're hearing from Boris at the, what was that, the GM meetings uh, about how there's a bunch of teams interested in Conforto, um, you know, money that he's going to want from teams for Conforto, I think mm -hmm. that the Padres would have to do another Hosmer situation. Not that Conforto is going to get $144 million, but they're going to have to overpay for him. And I, I, I just wouldn't be so inclined to do that over a guy like i'd rather pay, overpay uh probably for castellanos over conforto uh for being honest just because castellanos i think while conforto is a good fielder you're just gonna get more power from castellanos you just are uh mm. and i don't see much i don't see any signs that there's gonna be a big decline at least recently mm. two or three mm. years in castellanos where conforto while you could, you know, you compare him to Semi and Semi, and that was a short season. Conforto mm -hmm. struggled, hit 230 with only 14 home runs, didn't even drive in 60 runs, uh, not a stolen base threat, and he did that the whole season. So while he stays healthy, you know, for the majority of the time, I just think that you're just overpaying really would not be worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm not totally convinced. That you would have to overpay for Michael Conforto. I'm just curious if he might bet on himself. I don't know exactly. But the other thing is that you do have a Chris Bryant out there as well, which is another guy a lot of Pirates fans are asking for. And that might be another situation where – I don't know if you saw the um, – well, who was it? Uh, I think it was the John Heyman tweet that I've been making fun of uh, basically since the lockout started, which was like the, the market for – there's several teams interested, and he just named – like every single team and i'm like what did this tell us this literally told us nothing like what do you oh yeah yeah there's there's uh, there's about 25 teams that would be interested in fernando tati shooter that was that was just really funny um and it, it definitely be interesting because i think that there's a lot of pros and cons for both conforto like you said that is true i don't think his offense would be a guarantee i think kiss castiana some people would say putting away from Great American Ballpark over in Cincinnati, like that might be a decline for him, but I've read some stuff that I actually don't think that that would be such the case. But then the equal thing is defense, so it's really kind of a positive and negative thing. Um, either way, I think that it's it's going to be fascinating to see what they do with that. Um, and hopefully it's not only just a Tommy Pham thing. I don't really know what they're going to do there, but there's a lot to, to bet on with the Padres. This is not my best transition ever. But, guys, let me talk to you really quickly about betonline.ag, which has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football continues, it's March through the College Bowl season and the pro football playoffs. That's right. We're going to have those coming up. And your fantasy playoffs. Hope you did well on those, by the way, everybody. Uh, Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. And if you head to their new, you know, updated everything, Sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit by using our promo code Locked On to receive that bonus. 50% welcome bonus, that's a big deal. Whether it's baseball, basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, Vegas casino games, probably the Oscars at some point, they'll have you be able to bet on that stuff, guys. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available at betonline.ag. BetOnline, where the game starts. And now, Ben, as we enter... The waning moments of this podcast. Uh, just continuing, I guess I want to ask you now, what are some other... Do you think there's any other free agent? I guess we'll start with that. A quick hitter. Uh, any other free agent that you'd be interested in the Padres potentially going after? Because they have made some moves with Suarez and Luis Garcia and some guys like that. You know, not necessarily these banger, oh my God type of signings, but they have made some moves. Do you think that there's any other free agent out there uh, that you're interested in? Uh, Chris Bryant's number one. <laughs> because of his versatility, power, uh, just the value that he can bring to the club. He can play, you know, multiple positions, all that. So we don't need to get a ton into that. Uh, mm -hmm. The bullpen, I think, is pretty much set. I think it's a similar thing, kind of like going into last year. Didn't really know who the closer was, but that ended up full, you know, that ended up, you know, solving itself uh, with Melanson. Obviously, the Potters are hoping it goes that well again. Obviously, probably not going to because of how well Melanson played. Uh, but in other areas of the roster, I mean, I don't know if it's really adding. It's more just seeing if they're going to subtract. And we all know who that guy is. Um, so <laughs> I think that's the big storyline is what more of what they're going to subtract. Because I know I don't think Freddie Freeman's an option. 
I don't think Anthony Rizzo is an option, any of that. I think that if they do subtract that guy, uh, that, you know, Cronenworth is probably the prime, uh, you know, <laughs> candidate to move to first or Alfaro. Uh, and then you, you know, you have to hit the bullet with Kim at second uh, and hope that CJ Abrams can come up. Um, because I don't think they're going to want to pay that much money, uh, you know, to a first baseman, Freddie Freeman. I know Freddie Freeman's the gr- a great first baseman. I'd love to have him, but not not at what he's probably going to command just because yeah. of what that back end of that contract would look like. And I don't think the Padres need to do another Hosmer deal. Not I'm not saying that it would work out like that because Freeman's a better player, uh, but – I think you know where I'm getting at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, But yeah, I think to be honest, it's more of just what they're going to subtract. And the big addition is obviously that power bat. Absolutely, man. I I, I agree. I think that there's, it's just so weird because they're in a weird spot. The Padres are in a weird spot and it's definitely not like this hopeless, you know, chasm of death or anything like that, that some other teams are in. This isn't Colorado. This, to an extent, isn't even in the Angels, but there is some weird stuff because there's not as much maneuverability with the roster as there might have once one bit uh, might have been. How do I say that? I don't know, but whatever. Um, yeah, I think that whether or not you get a Bryant or what have you, it's going to be interesting. The Padres already quite the amount spent on their roster, so it's going to be curious to see how that kind of um, plays out. I'm curious, Ben. Um, what else? Actually, two things. Two things. Most miserable moment of this 2021 season for you. You already talked about Tingler a little bit. What do you think was the saddest moment before? But I've been asking every Padres fan this. What do you think was kind of the... That's when I th- when I think of sadness, it was... Uh, cause, and Or you could also... Moment, too, if we want to not be overly negative here uh, as the, the year winds down. Uh, what do you think is kind of the, the poster child moment of the badness of the 2021 Padres? Oh, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> there's one that immediately comes to mind is probably the Emilio Pagan uh, mm. home run that he gave up to uh, Arizona. Who was that? No, it was against the uh, Cardinals. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, that big home run. They had the oh, lead. Yeah. Arizona Cardinals. It was football. like the eighth yeah. in St. Louis. They mm-hmm. had a chance. I yep. think it was the second game of the series. Or was it, mm-hmm. yeah, second. They had a chance to win that game. They just won a they, series against Houston, yeah. They might have mm-hmm. been able to win that game or the f- series finale, but losing that game, choking that game when you had a one-run lead in the eighth, uh, Tingler continued to go to Pagan, gives up the home run, and, and then you kind of knew that they were going to get swept. And that, the Cardinals, who were obviously their main competition in that second wild card spot, that, that was – pretty much the nail in the coffin i was kind of like okay now it's over they're you know they had remember they had a big lead that thing so that's they had all those cushions you know they had that cushion going into september a little bit uh but then you know getting by the cardinals who didn't know how to lose a game uh that that nail in the coffin that really was the biggest obviously the main tatis mini scuff there yep was bad um so I'll, i'd group all of that together um and then obviously you know the tati subluxations obviously they weren't it wasn't totally bad because you know Tatis was hitting 42 home runs I never want to see that happen uh the best moments obviously the musgrove no hitter for me that that's not even a question that that was you know closest i've ever felt to you know winning a world series or winning an nl pennant or whatever that that's obviously the top moment. And then there's other moments that you could think of, you know, with worse, the worst moments. But I think that in terms of the season and their chances of, you know, making the postseason or whatever, that Pagan St. Louis uh, series really sucked. Yeah. The Pagan thing. Oh my gosh, man, the damn Cardinals. Uh, but Ben, that's really well said. I, I agree. Um, and now I'm going to do the thing where I transition. I take advantage of your answer to just say, everybody, if you want to see what I thought were the worst, most miserable moments of the year, go check out my article. I wrote a couple months back over at just baseball, uh, the most miserable moments of the Padres 2020 one season and all podcast guys going to be talking top 10 favorite moments of the 2021 Padres. There weren't, you know, 
it's not a memorable season in a lot of ways for how it ended up, but there were still some happy moments every now and then. So, and you want to be positive because it is after first, all. Yeah, if you divide the huh. first and second half, first yeah, half, yeah, exactly. Half, the second half was negative. <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. Before we wind down this bad boy, though, Ben, do you have anything else you want to plug? Yeah. So just at Talking Fires Instagram and Twitter. Find it on YouTube. Just look up Talking Fires. All the episodes are there. Um, all the video recordings. You can look up. If you want an audio, uh, look up Gaslamp Bowl uh, on Apple, Spotify, or you can just click the link in the bio on our social media. Um, and then really check out Gaslamp Ball for all the articles. Uh, and just definitely love talking baseball. Uh, you can always hit us on our social media if you ever want to come on. Um, we'll love talking baseball there. I'm looking to you know, putting some more fans on during this lockout just because there's literally nothing to talk about. So <laughs> just getting some different perspectives, different fans' opinions, nice. Um, but, yeah, hit up in our DMs. If you ever have any questions you want answered on the podcast, we'll, we answer every question that you want answered. So, yeah, there you go. I, I love talking Padres, so just keep, them, keep the questions, keep the comments coming. Absolutely. Keep it coming, guys. Onward. Let me just say thank you on Padres, your hashtag first listen of the day. Uh, remember, free and available on all platforms. Same thing, go check out Ben's podcast. Now make your second listen, by the way, guys. Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. It is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. Those guys do not miss. I'd be very, very curious to see what they think about betting on the Padres for next year. And with that all being said, that about does it. For today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from, like I said before. At Javapeno on Twitter, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, at L-O underscore Padres on Twitter. Lockdown Padres on YouTube. And check out Ben. If you're watching the YouTube right now, you see him, at Ben underscore Fad. And one more time, uh, Ben, it was very fun talking to you. And I hope that you have a great uh, New Year along with the Padres as well. Same here, same here. Until next time, let's go Padres. Woo!